Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And welcome to Our Lady of the Visitation for our confirmation in 2023. We would like to especially welcome His Grace Archbishop Stephen Brislin, and I would like to introduce you to the two visiting priests, Father Albert, who is an OMI from Namibia, and Father Sipilele, who is the provincial of the Orders of Friars Minor in uh, living currently in Johannesburg. They're here for a course, and, and so were able to join us, so we, we would like to welcome them very much. We have created a sea of red this morning, so there we go. To our confabandi and to Ross to be received into the church, you are very welcome. We are very happy to have come to this, to this point. Uh, it has been for many a long road and it has felt complicated at times, but we're very grateful and thank God for the opportunity and the grace the, of being here. We come to celebrate uh, in the fullest expression that we are of church because we come with our archbishop present among us, hence we can use the seventh candle today. And so we come as the fullest expression of who we are as the church. And so it is a wonderful experience for all of us to recognize who we are, not only as a parish, but as an archdiocese, and welcome these young people into that full expression, the fullest expression of what it means to be Catholic. And so we thank them for their dedication and their commitment, and we ask God's richest blessing on you in your confirmation, but also in your ministry as Catholics in the, into the future. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Father Robert, for those words of welcome, and it's truly wonderful to be with you to celebrate this Mass with you, and of course, most particularly to confirm these six candidates who will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Today, of course, we celebrate the birthday of the Church, being Pentecost, and we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. And we begin by quietly within our own hearts, inviting the Holy Spirit to fill our lives, to fill our very being with the fire of his power, the fire of his love, that we may be the committed Christians that we are called to be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. In humble prayer, we say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask to please Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven, like the rush of a mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from each nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one of them had heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us own in our native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling our own tongues the mighty works of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul, Lord God, our great you. Your spirit they die, return into the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. Rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I find my joy in the Lord. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. <clears throat> Brethren, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all and every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink one of the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
Come, Holy Spirit. Could we please stand for the sequence? Come, Holy Spirit, and from heaven direct on man the rays of your light. Come, Father of the poor. Come, giver of God's gifts. Come, light of men's hearts. Kindly, paraclete, in your gracious visits to man's soul, you bring relief and consolation. If it is weary with toil, you bring it ease. In the heart of your temptation, you bring cool, your grace cools it. If sorrowful, your words console it. Light, most blessed, shine on the hearts of your faithful, even into their darkness, darkest corners. For without your aid, man can do nothing good, and everything is sinful. Wash clean the sinful soul, rain down your grace on the parched soul, and heal the injured soul. Soften the hard heart, cherish and warm the ice-cold heart, and give direction to the wayward. Give your seven holy gifts to your faithful, for their trust is in you. Give them reward for their virtuous acts, and give them a death that ensures salvation. Give them unending bliss. Amen. Alleluia. 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 O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> For those to be received into the church and to, who are to be confirmed, please stand. Thank you very much, Deacon Mike. Have they been well prepared? I think you should ask Father. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Have they been there? Thank you. I was their teacher, so I think it's trepidation. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Please be seated. It's always very nerve-wracking for those who have prepared the confirmation candidates for confirmation because, as you know, I very often ask questions and uh, the catechism teachers feel that their own reputation is at stake with the answers to those questions. But as I said to you outside this morning, just for once, I'm not really going to ask questions. So you can relax, but don't relax too much. <laughs> but one question I will ask, just to contradict myself, how long ago was Easter? 
50 days. Excellent. Well done. Without any preparation, you said that. So very good. 50 days. And that's an important question, you know, because we're celebrating Pentecost today, and Pentecost really happens 50 days after, after Easter. I did mention at the beginning of Mass that today we celebrate the birthday of the Church, and, and it's an opportunity just to express our gratitude to God for the Church. We should be very grateful to God for giving us the Church. We might not be grateful to him for the archbishop he's given us or the priest he's given us or whatever because we are human beings, but certainly for the church. And despite all the flaws of our humanity, all the flaws and the mistakes that are made by people because the church is constituted by people, nonetheless, the church is the channel of grace that God provides for us. We heard in the gospel that the people had gathered for the Jewish feast of Pentecost. You see, Pentecost is not just a Christian feast, it's a Jewish feast. It means a little bit different in the Jewish religion. In, in Judaism, it's called Hag Shavuot, or else Pentecost. And it's not surprising that Jerusalem was filled with so many people of different nations, different cultures, and different languages. They were all Jewish but they had come for this Jewish feast because it's one of the three obligatory feasts for male Jews. They had to go to Jerusalem to celebrate this feast. Originally, the Jewish feast was the Feast of Weeks. Their Pentecost feast was called the Feast of Weeks, and it really celebrated the harvest, the harvest of wheat. But after the destruction of Jerusalem, in 70 AD, when the Roman Emperor Titus destroyed the temple, uh, people were scattered, and slowly this feast changed, and it became the feast of celebrating the giving of the law by God on Mount Sinai to Moses. And from what we gather in the Old Testament, the giving of the law, the Ten Commandments, in other words, after the Passover of the Jews, that's the liberation from e e Egypt when they were liberated uh, by the mighty hand of the Lord and they crossed the Red Sea. And uh, 50 days after that liberation, the law was given by God to the Jewish people. And so we can see there's a bit of an, an analogy between our Pentecost and the Pentecost of the Jews just as there's an analogy between the celebration of Easter, our Easter, and the Passover. Because when the Jews were liberated from Egypt, that was their redemption, that was their salvation. And in Easter, when we celebrate the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that is the final accomplishment of redemption and of salvation. That's because of the passion and the death of Jesus that we have the opening of the kingdom of God to all of us and for all of us. And just as there's that analogy between Easter and the Passover, so between our Pentecost and the Hag Shabbat. Because in the Jewish mind, celebrating the giving of the law, you see, we often think of law as a negative thing. But for the Jews, and, and really if you think about it, law is very, very important because for the Jews, the law was given to them to guide them, to give them wisdom, to teach them and to instruct them so that they would know what God expects of them, what's the correct thing to do, how should we be living our lives. And so they saw the law as being a great blessing given to them by God. In fact, it's written in the Psalms, what other nation can say that they have been given their laws by God? But for the Jews, these laws came directly from God as a blessing and as a way of teaching them on how to live a good life and to give them guidance and wisdom and understanding. But we know that the law in itself falls short in the sense that it can become a little bit of a, 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 a list that we just tick off. Thou shalt not kill, well, I haven't killed. Uh, thou shalt not commit adultery, I haven't committed adultery. We don't see beyond the letter of the law. And that's why 50 days after Easter, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, God gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we now know that we live not by the law alone, 
but we live by God's Holy Spirit. And what does that mean? It means that that Holy Spirit is able to guide us, to teach us, and to instruct us how we should live our lives and how we should respond to new situations that are not explicitly covered by the law or the Ten Commandments, how we must interpret the struggles of life when things are confused, when we are looking at pros and cons, how do we discern what God is asking of us of doing what God wants us to do? And that's the great gift of the Holy Spirit. Because there are many things that the Ten Commandments don't cover explicitly. For example, we know that if you drive under the influence of alcohol, for example, it is a sin because you're putting somebody's life at risk. But there's no one of the Ten Commandments that says don't drive under the influence of alcohol. Another one uh, example would be of abortion. The Ten Commandments, the Bible doesn't speak explicitly of abortion, but we know and we interpret through the guidance of the Holy Spirit that life is sacred and that life comes from God. And therefore the Holy Spirit is able to help us in, in the confusion of life and the different issues that we come across, the choices we have to make, to make that which is pleasing to God and to do the right thing insofar as we possibly can. So the coming of the Holy Spirit doesn't negate the Ten Commandments, but is in fact a fulfillment and a renewal of God's gift to us to help us to find our way and to navigate through life. A very good example of navigating through the complexities of life is simply to think of if you went on a hiking trail. And if you're on a hiking trail, there are normally markers, perhaps a yellow diamond or something, and you just follow those markers and you go on your hike. And suddenly if those markers disappear, you know that you've got to go back and you've got to find the marker again so that you can find your own way. In some way, the Holy Spirit works like that in our own lives. The Holy Spirit guides us to make the right decisions, to progress in our spiritual life, to deepen our love of God and our sense of discipleship, but sometimes we go off the path. And when we go off the path, we've got to try and find it again and return to God and to continue to do what he's actually calling us to do. The Holy Spirit gives us that strength, that courage, that zeal, if you like, to serve life because ultimately that's what our faith is all about. It's about life. Uh, first of all, the belief that our lives come from God and that God is the creator of every form of life. So it's acknowledgement of that. But it's also an acknowledgement that the life we have and that we are living, even as we are on earth, is not our own human life. It is the life of Christ living within us. And that's fundamental to what we believe. We live because Christ lives in us. So no longer simply a human life, but the divine life is in us. And furthermore, we know that that divine life will be brought to accomplishment when we are called into God's heavenly kingdom, where we are offered resurrection from the dead, when we are offered eternal life. And so the Holy Spirit will help us to serve life and to do everything in the way in which we live our lives to enhance life, to protect life from womb to tomb, but also to enhance life in terms of uniting people. Just as the people at the Feast of Pentecost we heard about in the Gospel reading of many different languages were united. Each one heard the message in their own language. We are called to unite people to respect human life and to respect the dignity of life, no matter whether the person is rich or poor, whether it's of our culture, of another culture or nation, Respect for human life is fundamental to what it means to be a Christian. Without discrimination, without any sense of superiority, that we are a special group superior to other people. No, we are all human, all creatures of God, and we as Christians serve unity and serve the dignity of life in all that we do. The Holy Spirit, and another reason to be deeply grateful to God, the Holy Spirit is God's living presence in our own lives, his living presence in our community. And because of that, we are in communion with God and we have that unity between ourselves and God. 
It is a great gift that we have been given. And therefore, we thank God's Holy Spirit who lives in us and the Holy Spirit who lives in God. And because of that, we too live in God. So we pray, especially for you, the six who will be confirmed today, that the Lord will bestow his Holy Spirit upon you in absolute abundance and that all of you will open your hearts to receive God's Holy Spirit, not only today, but also in the future. And enable that Holy Spirit through your own openness, your own willingness to enable the Holy Spirit to help you to make good choices, to be able to na navigate your lives through the complexities of life. May God's Holy Spirit give you wisdom and understanding and all the gifts. May God bless you. Just as your candle is lit, please stand. So now before you are received into the church, Ross, and for all of you, before you receive God's Holy Spirit in confirmation, I ask you to renew the profession of faith you made in baptism or your parents and godparents made in union with the whole church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And, yes, and Russ, if you would please come forward as we receive you into the Church. Russ, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into full communion with the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to come forward with your sponsor. And profess the Catholic faith in the presence of this community. This is the faith in which, for the first time, you will be one with us at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the Church's unity. And I now invite you to 
express your own faith. And they even profess all that the Holy Catholic Church teaches and proclaims to be revealed by God. Christ, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. Are we going to bring them out? Yeah, so we're going to sing. That's it. We stand now to sing the invocation of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them, to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. And as I and the priest lay hands on their heads, I ask you to pray for each and every one of them in the silence of your hearts. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord.
Let those who are to be confirmed please come forward. Andrew Best, who takes the name St. Dominic. He has as his sponsor Robert Tull. Michaela Edwards, who takes the name Our Lady Mystic Rose. She has as her sponsor Peter Duckett. Peter Davids, who takes the name St. Vincent de Paul. He has as his sponsor Edward Davids. <clears throat> Joshua van Linden, who takes the name St. Justin Martyr. He has as his sponsor Dominic van Linden, who is represented in proxy by Catherine Andrews. <laughs> Kelly Hoffman who takes the name St. Cecilia. She has as her sponsor, Cindy Herselman. <laughs> Ross Andrews who takes the name St. Timothy of Ephesus. He has as his sponsor, Catherine Andrews. Father, God, on this, the church's birthday, we bring our prayers to you in confidence as we prepare to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Church of God, in union with Francis our Pope, Stephen our Bishop, Sylvester his Auxiliary, and all the bishops, that God, who gathers us together by the Holy Spirit, may help us grow in unity of faith and love until his Son returns in glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For us received, for us received and confirmed in the gift of the Spirit, that we may give witness to Christ by lives built on faith and love. We pray for courage that, like the disciples after the Pentecost event, we too may fearlessly proclaim our faith in Jesus Christ. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our parents and godparents who led us in faith, that by word and example they may always encourage us to follow the, w- the way of Jesus Christ. We pray that the Holy Spirit may teach us wisdom and simplicity of heart and help us to care for one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all people of every race and nation, that they may acknowledge the one God as Father and in the bond of common fellowship seek his kingdom, which is the peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. May we always strive to live the kingdom in our parish. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In silence, we present to God the prayers of our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. We pray the prayer for Southern Africa, and given the conflicts happening beyond the South of Africa, we drop the word Southern from the prayer. Merciful Father, Father, send forth your Spirit spirit upon us, us, the the people people of Africa. Africa. May May we we hear hear anew the the voice of Jesus Christ, Christ, inviting us to walk with him across the turbulent waters of our time. Courage, it is I, do not be afraid. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, empower us to bring comfort to the restless, hope to those who despair, healing to victims of violence, and reconciliation where there is division. May the Holy Spirit heal our families and communities, Grant us ethical and courageous leaders who put the good of the people before their own interest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we commit ourselves to speak the truth with courage, to act justly in all we do, to share with those in need, and always and everywhere to respect your gift of life as we strive to proclaim the values of the kingdom in In solidarity solidarity with with all people people of goodwill. Amen. God, our Father, you sent your Holy Spirit upon the apostles, and through them and their successors, you give the Spirit to your people. May the work begun at Pentecost continue to grow in the hearts of all who believe, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the cause of his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of the sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those <coughs> you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. The same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, Bishop Sylvester, my assistant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we offer you also for those reborn in baptism, whom you have been pleased to confirm by bestowing the Holy Spirit, and in your mercy keep safe in them your grace. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephanos, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not waiting our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing together. Yes. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. As we offer each other the sign of peace, let's first turn to the camera to wish those participating at home the peace of our Lord. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O oh God, to bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, save God, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Good morning, Your Grace. On behalf of everybody getting confirmed, our sponsors and families, we would like to say a very big thank you to you for coming this morning to give us this blessed sacrament. Our journey to today has been filled with lots of learning, some heated but valuable arguments, special guidance from Father Robert, lifts from our parents, but most of all, a sense of peace and love for this path we have chosen. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. We also have a certificate for each of the confirmandi and a, a little gift from the parish. So could I ask um, Your Grace if you would be kind enough to give those to them as well, please? Ross Andrews. <laughs> Thank you, Your Grace, <laughs> even for the last comment. <laughs> uh, since it is also a parish mass, could I just please uh, draw your attention to one of the uh, one or two of the notices that um, are in the bulletin? First of all, that the um, winter warmers collection. Thank you very much for those who have brought in a reminder that next weekend is the last date for winter warmers. If you haven't got uh, clothing or blankets to bring in, you are very welcome to make a donation. Uh, you just write winter warmers into the parish bank account and we will happily allocate it to winter warmers. It costs around 135 Rand for a very good quality, slightly waterproof resistant blanket, which is very important. Um, and so we're hoping to be able to at least meet our, our, our target from last year. So if you still would like to participate in that, that's the rest of this week. You can either drop the clothing at the parish office or you can bring it to Mass next weekend. Um, and then also uh, the, the donations can be made at any time into the parish bank account. So thank you in anticipation for that. And on behalf of all those who are going to be cold this winter, a thank you for your kindness and generosity. Then you will also notice that there is a Eucharistic expo exposition, exhibition currently in the church. There was the notices as you came in, and in your bulletin there was a guide to having a look at this. This is an initiative of the youth of the parish. 
Using the um, exhibition as set out by Blessed Carlo Acutis, they have put up a fraction. If memory serves, there were 162 Eucharistic miracles, and we've only got 24 in the parish. The number I can't remember. I seem to have got it wrong. But 24, in the 20s in the parish, we'll do that number this year. But could I please ask... They're going to be up for four weeks leading up to Corpus Christi, which is in two weeks' time, and the two weeks after Corpus Christi. And so please take the little booklet, follow it through the church, and have a look at the different places that Eucharistic miracles have happened in the world. As I say, this is only a fraction of them, and over time we will develop all and show you all the different miracles. But I think this is a wonderful initiative coming from the youth. I have had nothing to do with it, and so it is a wonderful expression of them of theirs coming using a blessed youth to try and promote eucharistic adoration and the realization of some of those fundamental tenets of our faith so thank you and congratulations to them for coming forward with this and then on the th on this wednesday the 31st of may is the patronal feast of the parish our lady of the visitation in the past, I have asked the Archbishop if we can translate it, but it's just such an awkward time. We would only celebrate it at the end of June because we've got huge solemnities coming up over the next weekend, so we're not going to ask to move it this year. We're going to simply have it on Wednesday. Um, the Mass has been moved to half past nine, and then we will have tea and cake in the hall. So whoever can come along, it would be wonderful to see as many of us as possible to celebrate our patronal feast, our parish feast here in um, the parish. So 9.30 on Wednesday morning. And then just please, if you're looking to join R the RCIA, the details are in the bulletin. And again, to our confirmandi, congratulations and well done on behalf of the whole parish. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries? <coughs> Mrs. Kerr is coming. Your Grace, would you mind giving them a blessing? Mrs. Kerr is coming, I think, down the side. <coughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> Fair point. Thank you very much and congratulations to the newly confirmed. You've already been applauded, so we won't repeat that. But your accomplishment today, and it is an accomplishment, as you know, it's not the end of the journey, it's just the beginning of the future. And what you have received today in the gift of the Holy Spirit, you've got to live in the rest of your life. But you must never forget that you have not done this by yourself. There have been people who have been there for you, who have encouraged you, who have helped you, who have formed you. Your parents particularly, of course, your siblings, aunties and uncles, grannies and grandpas, uh, your teachers and catechism teachers, Father Robert and Deacon Mike and so on. So whenever we achieve something that is good for us, we should never forget to be cognizant of the fact that there have been so many people who have helped us 
and who have guided us in the past. I do ask you, please, to continue to pray for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. We are very blessed in Cape Town because, by and large, we have all our parishes covered. Every parish has got a priest. If they haven't, then it's only for a brief period that they haven't, and that is a great blessing. But I think it's just so important in, in the world today as we see so many changes happening in the world and, and so many threats, if you like, so much need for the Word of God to be spoken and to call people back to the values in which we believe and the values which enable people to live together and to flourish. So we need priests and religious to serve God in order to encourage the whole of the Christian community to witness to our faith, to witness to truth, to witness to goodness, justice, to witness to peace, to witness to all that is good for people and for the world and for the environment. In order for people to be able to do that, they need leadership, and that's why we need priests and sisters, brothers. So please pray for that. And thank you very much indeed. You have just taken the second collection for the Priest Medical Fund. Uh, the fund is very important for the well-being of our priests, and we've been very blessed over the past few years. We're now facing a little bit of a, a difficulty, a little bit of a hiccup in that fund because of the increased costs, and of course some of our priests are aging. So your contribution is very, very important, and thank you very much indeed for that. I wish you every blessing for the Sunday. Let's now stand and pray for that blessing. Bow your heads for the blessing. And before the blessing, there's tea in the hall afterwards and cake. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And your Bow down for the blessing. Um, sorry. May, may God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.